Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. It is no secret that I have become a huge fan of the new implementation of Rex for our beloved MBS 3.8 TK4 as delivered by Jürgen Winkelmann and is an amazing uh, uh, packaging called TK4 Update 8. And two uh, great developers, Peter Jacob from Germany and Mike Grossman, also from Germany, they sat down and they ported uh, Rex, which is one of the many Rex implementations, to MVS, and they've done an outstanding job. And I've made several videos in this channel, such as, for instance, M84, where I describe some new features that came into Brex 2.3.0. Um, however, in the meantime, Peter and Mike have not been sitting still, and they've been putting in more and more amazing features into the Brex implementation. Right now, we have Brex 2.4.1. Um, that can be downloaded and tried and soon they will be releasing 2.5.0 and as you know one other pet project that I have is the HNET network of mainframes uh, all around the world we have I think at this time over 120 130 uh, mainframes connected some are real mainframes such as my own very real um, uh, IBM mainframe some are emulated some are VAX machines we even have a uh, control data uh, mainframe uh, connected to it or a couple of those so and this is web there's this website that I keep keeping and maintaining called moshix.dino.net as you can see here if you go there you have a, a list of all the nodes you have some of the services that are available on our bitnet or a network job entry implementation and of course we also have since uh, Bob Palmonter released his amazing network job entry protocol for MVS 3.8 we have a very full and very uh, well implemented impl uh, network job entry subsystem for MVS 3.8 as well and all of that of course is amazing because we have uh, we have with an operating system that is from 1982 1983 we have uh, all these amazing things, all these compilers. We have now Rex back backported to it. Of course, Rex did not exist until much later for MVS. We have network job entry. We have all. The, we have TCP/IP. We have all these amazing extensions that, ha that have been added by the community at large. And so today, I thought well, I'm going to show you one or two more amazing things that can be done with the Rex implementation for MVS, especially when it comes to doing stuff uh, over the internet, over TCP/IP. Yes, it is possible with MVS 3.8, which actually came out just about the same time as TCP/IP, um, uh, as the protocol protocol came out. But of course, MVS did not support TCP/IP for another, I want to say, another 10, 12 years after that. But it's been uh, we have access to TCP/IP even from MVS 3.8 update. Eight. Uh, I also want to mention that update 9 is going to come out at some point in the future. I do not know when, but uh, support for all TCP IP is going to be even better there. Uh, there's some new features that are coming out that I'm really excited about. But let's go and look what is possible today. So uh, one of the things is I'm going to make another video how to change the logon screen because that's always a popular topic in the communities around MBS 3.8. As you can see here, I took a screen and uh, from somebody else and, uh, and installed it. And so I'm gonna log in here now, do my MBS running in the cloud, and we're gonna play a little bit with the possibilities of this uh, new Brex 2.4.0 that I think I have running here. So first of all, I'm gonna just show you what is possible. I'm gonna go and run this command and what you're seeing here, what's happening is I have a Rex program that is going and get this web page, which you can access from your from any browser. This is live. This this web page was just fetched by this Rex program from an HTML web server. So in this case, I have an HTML web server which I wrote myself in Go. Uh, it's none of the Apache or Nginx stuff. I just wrote it myself, and I maintain this website which accesses the HNet. Uh, services and protocols but makes it possible to access it also if you don't have a mainframe or if you don't want to install a mainframe the one install network job entry uh, 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 software or configure it you can still access all of the services that we have available in the network mainframe network hnet we can also access it through the web browser now for instance if i do i don't know one of the things we can do here i can press on moon face it's going to go get from the world wide web 
World Wild Web, I should maybe say, the current moon phase here. And so I can do the same thing here. So I have a little program here running in Rex. This is all Rex and TCPAP on MVS 3.8. I can press here too. Oh, actually, this is the wrong one. Where's moon phase? Three. Sorry. I press three, and it's going to go and get me this over TCPIP HTTP protocol. Uh, I think this is quite amazing. We're using a, 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 an emulated mainframe from the 70s, running an operating system from the early 80s, which knew nothing about TCPIP, nothing about HTTP, nothing even about Rex, and we're now accessing this web page in real time. Just as an example, let's go get some other news, uh, some other services. So here we have real-time news. Um, and so we're going to put it here. We're going to look in a second how the applications look, looks like, how it accomplishes all that. But as you can see here, this is now June 9th, and it's getting uh, real-time news from NPR and from BBC. And the formatting is not too bad. If I do it here uh, on the web, form then I press real-time news it looks actually quite similar it's not getting everything done because obviously on a 3270 we can have bold and changing uh, sizes of the fonts but it does what it can do uh, and actually quite well so I I quite like um, at what is possible with Rex. And of course, this was programmed by Peter Jacob himself let's go look how it accomplishes all that so we're going to go and research a little bit. So this program that we were just running called X-Relay is this one. Oops. So it calls TCPI in it. So it initializes TCPIP, call display HTML. It gives here the uh, IP address of this website render fetched HTML so it, it, it gets the HTML stream and then it, um, it it starts tracing it now the it also gives us the possibility to select three of the services of this services here so info which is this one um, moon or news uh, we could also add more but this is just a, a very simple uh, demo application now, how do we display, once we fetch the HTML, how do we display it? So, um, here's where we do the rendering. And this is the part that is interesting. So, here we get, as you can see here, body, HTML, body. Uh, here we have the f HTML formatting. So, what what Peter has done here is quite amazing. He He's taken the HTML screen, stream sorry that came from his website and is rendering it, is removing all the tags and is understanding what those tags are and uh, and then he uh, he removes those so that he gets the, f the clear the clear text basically and this is just a part that does the getting of the website uh, anybody who's done any HTML, pro HT HTML or TCP IP programming can understand what this is, we're getting a page we're, uh, we're um, sending the user agent. So this is how we're pretending to be a browser to this website. So this is the part where we pretend to be a browser to the to the web server of this website. So it will actually re reply and process the request for the for the page. Of course, there is um, a timeout. If this doesn't respond, it needs to gain control again. Otherwise, it would just if this was not responding, the web server was down, it would wait indefinitely. So, um, and uh, and then of course, after we receive the web page, we have to close the TCP IP uh, connection. So, uh, all, this, uh, all this is already part of the Brex implementation. Uh, WGET is also part of the GET of the Brex implementation. So, uh, getting something from the web is part of the Brex implementation. You don't have to r uh, write this on your own. We have a very good example of a rendering of a website. So this will satisfy probably 40 to 50 to 60 percent of all website uh, a website HTML. So this is quite amazing what um, what uh, Peter Jacob has accomplished here. 
And so I'm so excited about this that I thought I'll show it to you. Uh, obviously, we can get any kind of website like that. We could uh, get, I don't know, the we could get a news website. We could get, uh, as, as we, I, we're just showing, we're also getting the NPR website. So um, this is, is a full-fledged browser in Brex, basically. <laughs> so... Uh, and it's not much as if you look if you look we we're talking about 80 lines including the rendering including the pretending to be a browser a client to the web server so uh, we can put this in here the port is here so this is all very easy to understand and so you could write uh, a little reg script to to get any kind of website and then store it locally and then start rendering it to show it on the on the 3270 emulator or whatever you need to do with it parse values, get values out of it. We could we could implement reimplement this whole thing here also on uh, on on MVS with Rex. Um, we don't have to go get it from this website because I'm also just getting from another web server obviously. So whatever I'm getting here we could also just go and get directly from this web server as well. So that's the amazing thing um, that we have and uh, as you know we also have um, the network job entry interface into uh, Brex and I've made a video about it. Uh, video will be um, let's see if we can find it. Yeah, here it is. So uh, if you go to M168, it's a recent video. It will, well, I'm also showing in this video how I um, how I am using Brex to connect to network job entry and send and receive and even uh, implement a whole chat server in uh, in Brex, which we have. Uh, we also have an, for instance, we also have an Elisa uh, server so that over network job entry you can chat with uh, not sorry not Elisa Eliza obviously uh, and uh, and get um, a treatment for any kind of psychological problem you may or may not have so all this uh, we have an FTP uh, we can pr we could even write a telnet server so the the possibilities are endless and you can see here it's really easy to implement an FTP server in in Rex so uh, we don't have to use the built-in FTPD server that comes with um, MVS TK4 minus update 8 we could write our own we could write um, a web server. We could write anything that is TCP/IP. So uh, all this, thanks to this truly amazing implementation of Brex for MVS, it's really amazing. We have full screen capability. We have TCP/IP. We have network job entry. I would say that in a way, this has, is becoming better than the Rex that we have with later versions of MVS because it has so many. Um, interfaces to other subsystems which are important so bravo to Mike Grossman and Peter Jacob it's quite amazing if you uh, want to play with this then I suggest you go watch one of my videos on how to get Brex installed I will also put in in the description below this video the link to the repository where you can get and obtain Brex and install it on your own with the instructions and then uh, if I will also put in here the source code for uh, the web um, client so you can go and play with it and extend it uh, with according to your needs and requirements if you have any questions about this please post them in the description below this video I'm quite sure that Peter Jacob and Mike Rosman are going to follow the comments and any questions and will be able to answer them directly in the description below this video again thank you Mike thank you Peter Jacob for an amazing job and thank you for your continued development of Brex I'm quite excited about what's in the future and uh, again thank you for the amazing community we have built around MVS and uh, and even VM370 and uh, there is no end in sight of the things we can do Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please press on the subscribe button that you see here and see you soon. Goodbye.